So welcome everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, this will be a talk about building trust in online environments. And it will be an interactive session, uh, so it will not be me talking, the only, only, only one talking for the next 30 minutes, but it will also be, ask some of your participation. Um, so the goal of today is to inspire you and to find ways to uh, build trust together in an interactive way. And I will facilitate the session today. Uh, I'm Evelyn Roos. I'm an uh, Agile business consultant or an Agile coach for Xebia. Um, and I'm also a professional Scrum trainer for Scrum.org and a certified trainer for training from the back of the room. Um, my most important job, of course, is to be mother of three kids. Uh, and also to be a wife to my partner, of course, but uh, that's one of the four. Yeah, we, I could say we, I have four kids, right? We have three kids and one husband that makes four. Um, so what I do, I, uh, I give trainings, I coach uh, organizations to become more agile, and um, uh, I do these webinars and talks at conferences. So I have actually three things that I, uh, that I like to do, and of, one of them is uh, this one, so giving a talk. Um, so this is about trust. For me, the question to you is, what is trust? And I want you to write your definition or your thoughts about it down in the chat. So, and don't hit enter until I say so. So please write it down in the chat. What is your understanding of trust or what does it mean to you? So write it in the chat. And when I hit say hit enter, you can hit enter. Just take 30 seconds for that. And you can hit enter now. So what is trust for you? Feel comfortable and safe, freedom, having confidence in other people to do as they say. Be sure or somebody else is honest on what they do. Safety, reliability, honesty, and transparency. Great. Okay, so we will hit most of these topics today and to find out how you can build on that trust. And for sure in an online environment, it works a bit differently than in a physical environment, but the basics are the same. So for me, trust is about relying on other people doing the right things and doing the things right. So I saw a comment over in the chat that was a bit about this. So doing the things right and trusting other people that they are doing that. So that's trust for me in, um, in my definition. Um, and there has been a lot, has been written a lot about teams, about your team composition, and what are the essential things that you need if you are working in a team. And of course, I see a lot of agile coaches and scrum masters as participants today. So you might know this model, it's of Lencioni, and it says the basis of a team is uh, trust. And um, uh, you can read more about it. I have this book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, in the illustrated uh, version, the manga version. Very easy to read. So that's a nice one uh, if you want to dive deeper into that. Very uh, easy to digest. Um, but I first want to explore with you what happens if you don't have trust. So to get your th thoughts around that, could you give me some examples that you might have experienced or heard of uh, that you noticed, hey, there's no trust here or there's something wrong with trust? So please write it in the chat. You don't have to wait until I say enter, but you can just share it if you want. And if you don't, you don't have to share it. So any examples that you might have endured or experienced in lack of trust? Thank you, Bob. Requiring many levels of approval before something can get done. Mm -hmm. Know that one. From Rebecca, someone from my team lied about having done something and didn't. This impacted the performance of the team. No commitment, stressful situation, going to a manager to resolve conflict instead of talking about it. Poor manager inhibiting team initiative. Okay, so these are real examples of when you have no trust. Management, micromanagement, Product owner agrees to present future plans to team and doesn't inform his or her stakeholders. Uh, senior leadership feeling uncomfortable in trusting our software team in another country. Yeah, very relatable. And I also have some examples of 
situations where trust is endangered. Um, for instance, someone could say, all oh, those stupid, stupid tests, I already told you this is high quality software. Um, so I'm gonna, not going to read them all, uh, but a few. I do not believe we can reach the sprint goal, but I'll make sure to finish my part. And this one, you work on your part, I work on my part, let's do what we are good at. Training, me, are you kidding me? And the list goes on and on and on. Sharing my failures, never. Who cares if we don't finish it to sprint, we'll fix it in the next. I wonder how productive he is when he's working at home. So a lot of examples of situations where trust is endangered. And these are things that we can observe, right? So these are things that you might have encountered in some situations. Um, and if you are aware of that, if you think, hey, this is something where trust is in danger, then you can work on it, right? So if you ha are, um, uh, so sorry, if you know that this is a situation where, uh, where trust is lacking, then you can work on it. But how to work on it? Um, and why do you need trust in the first place? So there has been a, an article, article in the Harvard Business Review, and it was about organizations, big organizations that um, are working on this trust not issues, but they are working in trust. And they say, hey, if you have uh, more trust in your teams or in your organizations, these are the benefits that you will experience. So having more productive people, more value created, uh, more creativity, more pride in the things that you do. So these are all the advantages if you are working in a trustful organization or in a team. So if we break down, so if, if we break down trust, trust is about a few things. It, consists of credibility, so what people say. It consists of reliability, what people do. It's also about intimacy, how easy you share information. And it is about self-orientation, the focus on other people. And this is something that came out, out of the, um, the book, The Trusted Advisor. You can see the link in the, um, in the lower end. It's about understanding trust. So here are some examples. You are credible if you don't lie um, and if you speak up when you don't know something. So that's, uh, that makes you credible or not. You are reliable if you keep your agreements and don't talk behind others back. The level in, of intimacy is how easy you share information. And we say you are intimate if you keep secrets, um, uh, keep secret secrets and also share mistakes. Um, sorry. There's a, there's a wrong word. You are not intimate if you keep secret secret. And self-orientation is focus on other people. You are self-oriented if your own interest is the most important, if you're mostly interested in yourself and your own progress. So that says you have high self-orientation. If you only talk about yourself, if you only have your own interests, which is most important, then we say you have high self-orientation. So the tr trust quotient is about this. The credibility and the reliability and the intimacy divided by self-orientation defines your trustworthiness. So, and you can work on all these elements. So what you want to do, you want to increase your credibility, reliability and intimacy, but you do want to have a low self-orientation. So these are the elements of, of trust or trustworthiness. And we say, hey, you can work on all these elements. And it's easier to break them down and not see trust as, as, as one thing, but to break them down in these four elements. So that's a lot of theory and this is a very interesting theory, but what now? So how can we make this practical? How to start building trust with online teams? So for instance, if you want to increase your credibility, these are the do's and don'ts that you could do to increase the trustworthiness within your team, within your organizations. The same goes for uh, reliability and intimacy. And you do want to decrease your self-orientation. So these are just some examples that you could think of when you, work, when you want to work on these elements of trust. But how, that's the question. Um, so what we're going to do in a moment, we're going to explore with each other what it means if you want to the increase, for instance, your intimacy. What you want to do is to get to know each other. How can you do that to organize a virtual team lunch like every, every week? 
So that is something that will increase your intimacy, getting to know each other on a personal level, on a social level. And again, this is just an example that you could use. So here comes the team exercise. What we're going to do, we're going to a mural board and um, we'll put the link in the chat and we're going to put you in breakout rooms. The question that you need to keep in mind when you are in the mural is how can you increase your credibility? So what are the do's and don'ts? And you will find some examples on the mural board. Um, you can also dive in how to increase your rel reliability and your intimacy and how to decrease your self-orientation. And if you are on the mural board, you will see these elements on the board. Uh, I will click quickly share my screen so it's uh, a bit easier to follow before you go into the breakout rooms. Um, where is it? Yes. So this is me sharing my screen. In a moment, we will go uh, into it ourselves and you will have some time there to explore it. So you will see how might we increase credibility in online environment? How might we increase reliability and increase intimacy? But we want to decrease self-orientation. And there are some examples of how you can do that. The do's and don'ts are, so, are in there to, just to get your thoughts around it. And on the left end, you will see some sticky notes. So if you have never been to Mural, the most easy way is just pick a sticky note and start writing or start typing on it. And then you can pl place them at any place in the Mural. So easy as that, you can just type here what you think is, the, is, is uh, appropriate for that section. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Jessica to uh, put you in breakout rooms. You will have 10 minutes to discuss also with your fellow uh, breakout room uh, members what you could think of to increase credibility, reliability and intimacy, but to decrease self-orientation. Good, uh, then I will see you back in 10 minutes. Good, so welcome back everybody. Um, so I've, I've noticed some, some sticky notes have been added I'm, and I'm still sharing my screen so you can look along in the mural. I will quickly uh, look at, at the house because that's what we want, that's what we're aiming for. Um, so how to increase credibility in online environment. Um, so there were some examples, just be yourself fully, common sense, completely present. Share failures and successes in a sprint and work with others to ensure shared ownership. And I think it was on the, on the sheet somewhere, there are thin lines be, between credibility and reliability. So it might be that there's some overlap between, between these elements. Um, so how to increase reliability? Make a to-do list so you don't forget about what you promised to do. Turn cameras on during online events and make your status clear, especially if you are away from the screen. Block calendars when not available. Yeah, that's a good one. And how might we increase intimacy in the online environment? Uh, take time at the beginning of a team ceremony to chat, just to have some show, social time or some personal time. Open feedback with your uh, teammates. One-on-one -on -one sessions. I think someone is typing here still, uh, but we will continue to the decreasing self-orientation. Um, so visualization could help in that. And of course, I have some examples that you might have seen already that could help you in this. So best practices, for instance, to increase credibility, uh, be transparent about your progress, share successes and failures. For instance, during sprint review. Uh, it's also asking help and offering help during daily scrum. Increasing reliability, make online working agreements with the team. So this is all about, are you doing what you said you would do? Um, it makes you more reliable if you do. Uh, return phone calls, missed calls in an online environment. Don't ignore them, uh, but uh, contact the people that you have missed or the calls that you have missed. 
increasing intimacy. I think increasing intimacy is the most easy thing to do also in an, in an online environment. Just take some time to get to know each other, uh, to, birth, uh, to build on that personal connection within your, uh, within your team, within your organizations. And within the teams that I coach, we have, a, we have a, for instance, had a cooking together. We've had a cocktail workshop together just to have some fun things where you can cooperate or collaborate with each other not on a work level, but on a personal level. Um, having a pop quiz with your team. Decreasing self-orientation, showing empathy, listen to each other. And for instance, choose an activating sprint retrospective where everybody is involved and engaged. So it's not only like the scrum master or the agile coach talking, but everybody participates in that, in that session. Yeah, so to start building trust, it's good to know that trust consists of these four elements, right? Credibility, reliability, um, intimacy, and self-orientation. So if you want to work on trust, you can focus on one of these. So probably not good to focus on all, to, uh, to uh, give, <laughs> rephrase. Um, so if you want to work on building trust, choose one and start working on that instead of working all of, on all of them. It will give you more focus on, on that element. Um, so that was what I wanted to share with you. Thank you for participating and um, maybe see you in the, oh, there's a Women in Agile round table at, um, also where I will be at later on. So maybe see you there. Okay. Bye. Good. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.